approach to a patient with memory loss. Let's begin our approach using P3 Maftosa, 3 P's, present complaint, past complaints, personal history. Let's start with present complaints. Do you mind if I ask you what has brought you into hospital here? Can you please tell me more about it? In what way is his behavior different from usual? Let's ask some specific questions for a detailed assessment of cognitive impairment. Ask, what changes have you noticed in his behavior? Then, ask questions about daily activities, focusing on the type of task and the degree of disability. Regarding memory assessment, we will ask questions regarding short or long-term memory loss separately. Firstly, for short-term memory assessment, ask, does the patient easily forget recent events? Like, what was the content of last night's dinner? Does he forget new information he has just been told? Describe the names of three things to him and after a few minutes, ask him to recall, what were those three items? Does he forget where he puts things, like car keys or mobile phone? It will provide the detail of the integrity of short-term memory status. Next, we will ask questions to assess long-term memory loss. Does he forget the names of familiar people, like the name of his son or brother? Can he still recall events of the past, like the birthday of his mother? Regarding attention and concentration assessment, does he find it difficult to concentrate on tasks that require concentration and attention, like counting money or spell the word backward? Next, regarding orientation, ask, does he need to be frequently reminded of what time it is or where he is? Does he get lost in familiar places? Next, ask about language and comprehension. Does he use the wrong words for familiar objects? Does he have difficulty understanding written information? Does he use the same words to answer different questions? In the last, ask, does he have difficulty in performing activities like dressing, washing, or using household equipment? Let's ask for further details using mnemonic sodpura. Onset. How did it start? Did it come gradually or all at once? Duration. Ask how long it is present. Sudden onset of confusion of short duration is suggestive of delirium, whereas slow onset confusion with gradual progression points towards dementia. Progression. Ask, since the onset of the symptoms, is it getting better or worse? How quickly have the symptoms progressed over time? Is it the first time, or do you have similar complaints in the past, as well? If there is a history of a similar episode in the past, assess how frequently it is happening. Delirium follows a course of reversible and fluctuating impairment in cognitive function and consciousness. However, dementia is progressive and irreversible. Alzheimer's disease and frontotemporal dementia progress slowly. The rapid decline is seen in subdural hemorrhage and CNS tumors, dementia with Lewy bodies, and dementia associated with the Parkinson plus syndromes. A stepwise deterioration of symptoms is a feature of vascular dementia. Aggravating factor. Is there anything that makes it worse? Relieving factor. Have you noticed what makes it better? Associated symptoms. A thorough systems review is necessary for determining the cause of acute confusion in the elderly. Regarding neurological causes. Ask about the features of stroke, as confusion can be a manifestation of stroke. However, the presence of limb weakness, sensory disturbance, dysphagia, visual impairment, vomiting, vertigo and dysphagia will provide supportive evidence for this cause. History of head injury may provide a clue for a subdural hematoma in the elderly. Lewy body dementia may be confused with delirium because fluctuations in visual hallucinations are common and prominent. Ask about gait disturbance and balance problem, as it provides vital information to narrow down our diagnosis for memory loss. Parkinson's disease and the Parkinson plus syndromes are associated with narrow-based, shuffling gait. Whereas, normal pressure hydrocephalus is characterized by broad-based gait, and hemiplegic gait is typical of a stroke or space-occupying lesion. However, unsteady, ataxic gait due to cerebellar dysfunction may be seen in alcohol-related dementia. Next, inquire about postural instability and falls as a feature of Parkinson's disease, Parkinson plus syndromes, and normal pressure hydrocephalus. Moreover, a pattern of movement disorder may provide an important clue here, as resting tremor occurs in Parkinson's disease and dementia with Lewy bodies, whereas intention tremor and dystonia stiffness or cramps of the limbs may occur in Wilson's disease. Furthermore, chorea, writhing movements are present in Huntington's disease. Ask, 
Do you ever lose control of your urine? A feature of normal pressure hydrocephalus and frontotemporal dementia. Regarding psychiatric symptoms, ask, do you sometimes see things that other people don't see? Do you feel within yourself? Do you still enjoy the activities and hobbies you used to? Any evidence of sleep disturbance? Ask about recent behavioral and personality changes that are features of frontotemporal lobe dementia and advanced Alzheimer's disease. Moreover, hypothyroidism and Cushing's syndrome can lead to cognitive impairment, particularly short-term memory. Ask about hypothyroidism features, weight gain, lethargy, hoarseness of voice, and cold intolerance, whereas Cushing's syndrome can present as weight gain, muscle weakness, diabetes, and hypertension. Past complaints, similar complaints, has anything like this has happened to you? For how long? What did you take for it? Is it well controlled? Are you taking any medication? Ask about the current drug regime, any addition of new medications, changes in doses of current medications, benzatropine, procyclidine, amitriptyline, imipramine, citalopram, sertraline, and oxybutynin may cause cognitive impairment. Do you have any long-time medical condition? If yes, then ask how long? Is it well controlled? Ask about any history of dementia, diabetes, decompensated liver disease, epilepsy, Parkinson's disease, malignancy, and HIV. Ask about hospitalization, saying, have you ever been hospitalized? If the patient says yes, then ask for what purpose? For example, for any procedure like a biopsy. Next step is personal complaints. I'm going to ask you a few personal questions, and whatever you say will be confidential. Smoking. Do you smoke? If the patient says yes, then ask, how many cigarettes do you smoke a day? For how long have you been smoking? Tell me about your sleep. Do you drink alcohol? If the patient says yes, proceed by asking what do you prefer to drink? How much? For how long have you been drinking like this? Delirium tremens presence as a result of alcohol withdrawal. It is characterized by acute confusion, disorientation, agitation, and inattention. Moreover, Wernicke's encephalopathy occurs due to thiamine deficiency secondary to alcoholism. How is your appetite? Recreational drugs. By any chance, do you take recreational drugs? If the patient says yes, then proceed by asking, sorry to ask you, but what do you do? How do you take it? If injecting, ask, by any chance do you use a new needle all the time? For how long you are doing this? Do you use any other recreational drugs? Weight change. Have you been weighing on the higher side? If yes, ask about bowel habits. How often do you open your bowels? Have you noticed any change? Sexual history. Are you sexually active? If the patient says no, then ask, have you ever been sexually active? If the patient is sexually active, then ask, sorry to ask you this but are you in a stable relationship? For how long? Are you on any contraception? Did you travel abroad before your symptoms? Did you have any sexual relationship there? If the patient is a female, ask about 4P, period, LMP. When were your last periods? If more than 4 weeks, then she might be pregnant. How many days did they last? Are they irregular? Do you get pain? Any abnormal bleeding? Are you on pills? Oral contraceptive pills are a risk factor for pulmonary embolism. Pregnancy. If she is not active, so she is not pregnant. Then ask, have you ever been pregnant? Duration of pregnancy? Mode of delivery? How many children do you have? Any miscarriage or abortion? Any complications before, during, or after pregnancy? Pap smear? When did you have your last pap smear? What was the report? Was it normal? If it is abnormal, have you booked an appointment with GP? Allergy? Family history? For carcinoma history in a family is essential, ask, I am very sorry to ask, but anyone in your family is diagnosed with a sinister disease, cancer, travel history, have you recently traveled abroad, occupation history what do you do for a living, ask about the nature of the work, whether you have to take time off from work due to your symptoms, social history, where do you live, whom do you live with, do you drive, inquire about the functional status of the patient, particularly the impact on the activities of daily living, Determine whether the patient can go out of the house safely. Ask about episodes of violence or abuse towards others and self-harm. 
ask about the management of financial and legal affairs and whether the patient has appointed a lasting power of attorney, anything else you want to tell me, now, at the end take your time for an impression, then, turn to the examiner and say based upon my history, my most probable diagnosis is this, my differentials are this, this and that, and I should have ruled out this and that, thank you for watching, stay connected and subscribe to this channel for more interesting medical professional videos, and, good luck with your exam.